We must open up our minds And take a look inside I bet we find we hold all the answers to life You're watching RXG Exclusives Oh, they tried to keep us away my next guest is celebrity manicurist, former massage therapist, and powerhouse vocalist Rana Jones. One of these mornings, you're gonna rise up, you're gonna rise up singing. You know, it's been forever and a day since we've seen each other. We go way back, we co starred in the musical The Storm. First of all, you look exactly the same, <laughs> haven't aged a day, um, but, but let me just say, there's, there's a moment during that show that I remember very distinctly. Um, a lot of us thespians were on the upper level of the stage, overlooking you down below, belting your heart out, and we were supposed to keep our composure. That was next to impossible because you were absolutely magnificent. You you gave us a spiritual experience vocally and Kathy Wayne of the NoHo Arts District dot com said and I quote Rana Jones has several musical numbers that set her apart with a fantastic warm voice her character is thoroughly expressed during her vocal numbers and you sit up and take notice when she sings and that's one of many reviews that I recall that singled you out I regret we didn't get the show filmed but Me too. I hope, selfishly, that you and I get to share the stage one of these days. Um, but thanks for taking a few minutes to, to talk to us. And it's, it's great to see you. It really is. To you. So good to see you. And, and wow, I haven't, I remember reading that review way back when. And it's so nice to hear it coming from you, really. I, I, and, and to get the visual of you guys up in the, it was a, it's sort of an upper level on stage. Right. Sort of like a catwalk almost, but it was part of the show. I don't even know if you realized that we were all up there. We were like, oh my gosh, she's testifying right now. <laughs> I mean, it was just an amazing moment. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the boost. I appreciate that. You know, time goes by and you kind of just, you live things and then you just kind of keep going on and you forget a lot of stuff. and. I think because you're, for me, I was so, we're all in the moment, right? And, right. and it's nice to um, hear your observation because, you know, I'm making sure I can handle the microphone. I'm getting my notes out. I'm breathing okay. The, you know, settling in with the nerves and trying to tell the story. And um, I'm so glad that it was, it was moving for you. Was, uh, that was a fun show. It, it really was, and, and you, you kept us on our A game. Uh, I did. It was, it was definitely a fun experience. I remember your voice and just saying, and I, I know Alan and I often said to you, love your voice, Robert, love your voice. You did, I remember that. Thank you for that. Did you hear me say, I'm sincerely sorry? Did you hear me say, how much I care? Yes, you, you have a lot of soul and a lot of um, a lot of feeling you really the notes are important to you which is so nice to hear and and hear and see someone who really feels the music that they're they're letting go through them and out to the audience so it was you're very giving on stage and I personally um, I appreciate people who are like that because it it, um, it makes the whole experience so much more full when there's a give and a take amongst performers, whether you're in a musical or you're on stage with others and, and you've got the drummer back here and the guitar player over here and, and the, the sax player over here and, you, and, and everybody can kind of look at each other and we're like, yeah, we're on this ride together, right? And you feel like you're, it, it's not a solo thing, you're part of something that's moving together. And um, that's what, those are the moments I love. I love, I live for that. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing like it. And I guess I guess we should start there. How did you become a singer and an actor? When did it all begin for you? I was shy when I was a well, when I was a little little kid, I wasn't so shy. I used to sort of steal the guitar out of my sister's hand and say, "I'm playing this and singing it," even though I didn't know how. 
And as I got older, I sort of became very shy, and I and I would when I would sing, it would be sort of just with my friends, sitting on a corner, singing a cappella, and um, and I felt a little awkward and a little nervous singing in front of people. And I'm going to try to make this really short, but one day I went to the library of all places, and I found this record, um, and it was Joni Mitchell. You know who she is, right? Oh yeah. Joni blue album and I thought you can and you could rent or you could check out an album from the library and I I had never heard of it I liked the cover I liked her name I liked the names of the song titles and when I went home and I put this record on it was as if I had discovered this treasure chest of sound and 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 story and her voice oh my Oh my, I mean, just her voice alone and the, the timbre. And Joni Mitchell is the artist who struck such a chord in me. She inspired me to want to explore my voice. Wow. And um, I remember living with that record, the Blue Album. And then it went on to become Court and Spark and, and Ladies to the Canyon. And, um, and to this day, I have to say, she was my muse because. Uh, she's her gift um what she can do with that in the way that she she plays her voice as if like you know like a horn player might explore the the horn or a guitar player would, would explore the um the textures and the timbres of his his instrument she did that with her voice and um so then there were other artists throughout the years who have i've been pulled into the same and um and they have put me in awe <laughs> Anyone from Aretha Franklin to the gutsiness of Janis Joplin, and of course Adele, Brandy Carlisle, love. Um, there's something very just um, to me authentic and moving, and and um, about the Bonnie Raitt was another one um, where I, I, I find myself. And maybe as an actor, actors do this, my husband does, where you're watching it or listening to a performer and there's a part of you that gets inside of what's going on. I think being a vocalist and knowing my instrument, my mind travels into sort of the amphitheater in here and what it is that they're creating and unfolding, what's unfolding. And um, so, yeah, there's some singers that... <laughs> I don't know. That's a long story. No, no, that's great. That's great. I mean, that's that's the passion that's in you, and and I can feel it. That's that's what makes you the the vocalist, the musician that you are. So that's beautiful. Thank you. Well, um, I have to say, when I was um, when I was around 19, I enrolled in theater arts, and I thought I at first I thought I wanted to take pantomime classes, and that that class got canceled. So I started studying theater, and um, and. At, and that's when I met my husband, actually, but way back when. And I wanted, I wanted to try theater for the sake of getting past my awkwardness and my shyness and getting up in front of people and telling story. And, and um, so I used it as a tool. And then I found it fun at the same time to be able to express myself as another character, which uh, songwriting is often like that. You're putting yourself in someone else's place even though it might, you might sing it in first person. But um, theater, um, theater and acting allows you to sort of be yourself and not be yourself. It's super fun. And um, so there, that's how I got into acting. And then my husband, he's, he, his passion is, he's really, he's the actor in the family and he's also a director. And um, so he, uh, luckily with him, I get drawn into other projects. Um, I got to be in a play just this last year that he directed and it was a blast. I got to, it was com comedy. I got to be a whole different character. Um, it's called, you can't take it with you. And I was one of the leads and I got to sort of have this voice, like <laughs> and just mm -hmm. uh, play with my voice and, and be somebody else. And, and it was one of those things where it was such a wonderful cast that um, we all got swept away in the moment because everyone was, everybody was living in the moment with it and everyone was willing to say, yes, let's make this work. I, I, you know, I know you have this other life, but before we get to that other life, would you mind just singing a little something? I've been working on a song that was, I, I released a CD 20 years ago. I 
I can't believe 20 years has gone by and it was called Caffeine and Courage, or it still is. And um, it was my debut CD and has since then been my only CD um, for whatever reasons, time just flies. But um, I'm, I'm involved in this show that there's gonna be about, I don't know, 10, 15 artists that are gonna be involved and each one of us have an hour to play. And it's making me dust off all my songs and revisit them, mm. which is really healthy and I, I, it's called Sequester Fest. And um, I feel like this quarantine time has allowed me to push reset and come back to the things I love. And so um, I've been playing around with Caffeine and Courage, um, and, which is the, the, obviously the title of the CD. But the inspiration for this song is, um, is really about, you know, waking up your sleeping dreams you've been sort of like just going along and and um wondering what's next and you have this place you go to and this friend you talk to and um who sort of stimulates you so caffeine and courage is sort of the thought of like instead of going to the bar you're going to the coffee house and you're talking to your barista or your friend and or whoever's there and like okay i just need a little just a little need to talk this out and give me give me a cup to go and i'm ready to go i'm gonna make my life happen hey joe pour me another one hey joe come on and fill me hanging around here for more than just a while. Just till I can see clear enough to get back on my feet. And I've decided that today's the day I'm gonna walk on out of here. And wake up my sleeping dreams. Angel for me another one. Come on and fill me up. Yeah, Joe. I'm getting ready to do something. And I just need a little while. Yeah, I just need a little while. <laughs> oh, loved it, loved it. I, I, I'm, I'm picturing you performing this live, me being in the audience. I, I, it was, it was beautiful, just beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, oh, that was my little debut with this whole setup. That's Robert, great. thanks. This feels good. Well, so we know you as the vocalist, but you also have this other life <laughs> as a nail stylist, a nail technician, a, a, I, I don't know, what's, what's, how would you classify yourself? Um, I, I, you had mentioned celebrity manicurist, which part of that is definitely true. Um, and I'm also a commercial, I'm also a manicurist for commercials and television, meaning um, for hand models. So sometimes you don't even see the person's face. They're holding a product like a phone or or food or, or something. And um, so oftentimes they need someone like me to come in and instead of the makeup artist, it's me who's dressing up their hands because their hands are what they call the hero. 
mm. you know, when, when you see the person's face, they're the hero in, in the screen, but sometimes it's just the hands. But so it's a little mix of both. And um, I've been doing that. I've been a manicurist for quite a long time. Um, I used to work in salons for about 15 years. And then um, I sort of took a break from that and became a massage therapist. Um, because, <clears throat> you know, when you're sitting all day in a salon and you're smelling acrylics and things like that, I thought, this can't be healthy. Right. And I wanted to do something more. I felt like I, I felt like I had more in me I wanted to express. And getting into the healing arts felt very natural to me. And um, so I, I went into that for a number of years. And the interesting thing is, is about 10 years ago, I got a phone call from a manicurist client's daughter who was in production who said, hey, we need a manicurist for a commercial. Are you available? Had no idea this was a, was a world or a niche or anything. And I just said, yes. And um, which- Jumped into the deep end of the ocean. What was that? You jumped into the deep end of the ocean. I jumped into the deep end and I, and I was ready to explore something else. I'm sort of one of these people. It's like, what else is next? So um, the cool thing is, is that, um, so I thought, how are these two worlds going to complement each other, being a massage therapist and being a manicurist? And it's interesting because now you're in an environment where there's pressure and there's stress or Hand models sometimes have to get themselves into very precarious positions in order to to do the work that they do. So you don't see them. So they're like they're they're crouching down and they're putting their hands over tables above them and and um, or or you have talent that's coming in and and sometimes I can just say, hey, how about after your manicure, would you like a a massage just to get grounded and let's do some breath work and. Um, it just sort of evolved that way. So I, I started to be known as not just the manicurist, but you know, I have some extra, extra talents or extra gifts that I can bring to an environment that also keeps things kind of smooth and calm and friendly and fun. And, and um, so it's, it's been really an interesting, interesting, um, I guess it's been kind of an adventure. Yeah. I mean, what's life without the adventure, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's hard work involved for sure, and um, but there's also it's it's fun to be able to you know explore these different worlds. Well, well, you your 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 client list is massive, from celebrities to companies, entities. I I don't know if you'd like to talk about any of the people that you've worked with, but I know. If I recall correctly, you you did nails um, for Maya Rudolph not too long ago. Yes. How was that experience? Maya is it's wonderful. Any and every time I can work with Maya or see Maya, I have to tell you, there's certain people that you meet. I'm so glad you brought her up because she's one of those people where, like Maya, is in my heart. Maya is a beautiful, down to earth talented person who just is just I love so much um, she's real she's um, she's fun we all laugh a lot and um, and it's it's always a very and the people that work around her as well it's just it feels like family I have to say she has a beautiful beautiful um, crew around her and it evolves which, you know, I evolve in and out and some, you know, it just depends who's available or not. But Maya is, um, working with her is always, always, always a treat and a pleasure. And, um, and it fills my heart with love. She's just one of those people. That's great. <laughs> yes, it's true. I can't say enough, but yeah. <laughs> and in your line of work, you're in close proximity. It's a very intimate process. In light of world events, how has what you do been impacted what happens when you go back? Is your approach different? Where do you go from here? It, you know, it's a really good question. And I think a lot of us are asking that. And um, and what what is it gonna look like from here on out? Um, because it is, it, I, I know, I mean, what do you do when you're work, when I work and I'm doing someone's nails, it's not just me and that person. Oftentimes I'm working along with 
they're getting their makeup done, they're getting their hair done, I'm, I'm sitting on the floor and doing their nails. So it's a group of us. And how, how does that person, the, the talent, you know, we're all so close in proximity. I guess we could all wear masks and gloves and the talent, we'll have to get ready as the talent. And um, one of the things um, that I discovered through uh, a makeup artist that I know, on Instagram is a great way to stay in touch with everyone. And she had taken this Barbicide certification course. So if anyone's in the industry, this is good to know. There's a Barbicide Blue is a company who, for free, you can go on there and you can take a COVID-19 certification. Mm -hmm. And um, and so they make you aware, and, and you can check in on it regularly, see if anything changes. But they make you aware of like distancing and, and masks and, and the importance of, you know, how long the virus is, you know, at least what they know now, you know, how long it stays on certain things. And, and so it prepares us as um, technicians and practitioners to be, be mindful of what we need to do. They'll always wash your hands, all that stuff, of what we mindful we need to do when we're back in in um, production together when we're back on set together. But I do have to say it's, it's, I just, I keep trying to, I listen to NPR, I, I talk to friends and we're all wondering what the climate is going to be like coming up. Um, so there's a lot of uncertainty until, I guess until the curve, until the things flatten out and, um, I don't know, it's, it's sort of like we're kind of, it's a wait and see and just learn as we go. Um, so right now it's, it's, it's um, there's a lot of question marks. <laughs> a lot of question marks, that is for sure. And, uh, you know, it would be erroneous for people to think that skin care and beauty is only for women. Uh, because it's important for us men too. I'm curious about your advice for men and women of, of how to deal with their skincare and, and beauty tips amid the pandemic, from your perspective. Okay, from my perspective, um, one thing, I, I, and this goes along with beauty and skincare is more than skin, it's more, it's skin, more than skin deep, right? This is, this is my philosophy. It, it can't just be here, it, it's, our skin, our skin is the largest organ of our body. I don't know, most, some people don't know that. So it's, a, it's an organism that needs to be fed from the inside out. So plenty of hydration, plenty of sleep, taking, you know, taking vitamins that agree with you and resonate with you. Um, I've been finding that, um, it, you know, because stress takes a toll on us when we're not drinking enough fluids, it, 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 you, you, the first place we see it is our skin. Men or women, um, skin care and beauty. Um, I myself have taken the opportunity during this, this sequester, during this COVID-19 thing. Um, in the beginning, I, was, I had a lot of panic. I, was, I had some fear and, um, and it was taking a toll on me because I, I found myself clenching my jaw you know, furrowing my brow, getting headaches, back aches, because you take it on physically. And I thought, wait a second, I need, this is a great time to do a reset. And so I've, I've d been doing some exploring and um, as a result of that, I'm eating better. <laughs> I'm doing some meditation. We even do, we even listen to some meditation stuff before we go to sleep at night. Um, I've been doing a, sort of what's called a vision quest, which has allowed me to sort of rethink the way my mind works. So that because you get caught up in the chatter in your head, and like I said, you know, stress, we're breathing shallow, we're not breathing deeper, we're, we're sort of clenching. And, and it, it, fatigue has a lot to do with how we look and how we feel. And um, so along with doing this, uh, this vision quest, Michael Beckwith, I'm gonna mention him because he's the teacher in this. Um, there's been some really great discoveries and in, in what I enjoy learning about is how the mind works and different parts of the mind. The dialogue that can get us caught up in, 
sort of like this frontal lobe where there's this negativity that we're hearing ourselves say. We're like, who is that? What's going on? Is that me? And then you start to go, wait a second. No, I, I have another, there's another conversation here that I want to tap into and be aware of when I'm, when the, when, when, when my mind goes back into the, the fear base and the chatter. And um, so to me, I feel like it's holistic. The skincare, yes. Um, cool showers, cool water feels great. Um, it's it's really good for helping this refresh the skin. Um, I like serums. There's Orly. Orly makes a really great spa ritual um, serum for your for your skin. Which, you know, when you get out of the shower and you put it on your skin, your skin the pores are open. Your skin is like saying, ah, bring it on, and it soaks it in. Um, so. I think sometimes it's the rituals that we do for ourselves and it's the intention that we give to our self-care. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. And uh, you mentioned sleep and hydration. That's very challenging for us artists. I can attest to that. Um, but it is, it is vitally important. You're, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, I'm learning to listen. I mean, I used to plow through when I got fatigued. And I used to, I remember, I used to sit up and write until four o'clock in the morning because nobody was around and you can, you, the whole world is quiet and you can really think. And I've found that as I've gotten older, there's a point I get to where I can feel the fatigue setting in where my thoughts aren't as clear. I'm starting to feel a little, um, I'm, I don't want to push past that anymore. I will, I will a little bit and then I go, wait a second. Mm, I think I'll be better if I just allow myself to shut down have that time let my body rhythm my body go into its natural rhythm because tomorrow i'm gonna be fresher and better and um that has rung true um for both my husband and i we both uh, we kind of like keep each other in check with that and it's good to have a support system like that and we recognize when we're both because we're both art artists and we're both creative so we're uh, whether it's like rearranging the furniture or getting into songs or or whatever it is we're doing um, we can easily push ourselves too far and to the point of fatigue and and sometimes it's hard to rebound from that where can people find out more about you well um, there's a few different ways I mean the, I have to admit sequester fest I feel like it's a um, it feels very new and fresh for me right now because like I said I'm revisiting old stuff and getting into this creative mode and it feels so good because I've sort of denied myself that for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so Rana Jones, um, Rana Jones on um, Facebook, and you'll see my picture up there. And um, I'm on Instagram, and I do I do post my manicuring stuff as well as my music stuff. There's recordings there, um, and I, I RanaJones.com is my website if people want to check out. My, you know, my manicuring work, my, the celebrities I've worked with, the jobs I've worked on. There's a lot of photos there. It's super fun to see. Um, and uh, my music, as far as the CD goes, if anyone's interested, it's on Amazon.com. It's on iTunes. Amazon Music, sorry. iTunes. Um, it used to be on CD Baby, but I think they closed down their, their CD store. So now they're just sort of like acting as sort of helping with digital distribution. Um, iHeartRadio, that's pretty cool. That's, and, that's um, awesome. I am, I, in the midst of dusting this off, I am now, um, I am now moving towards wanting to do another CD and, um, and talking to a, a, a producer who has a recording studio, someone I've wanted to work with actually, who's worked with several friends of mine over the years. Um, so that's all brand new. You're the first to hear that. All and, right, um, we've, got, we've got the scoop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm learning to say yes. And that's part of part of the personal work I'm doing because um, I was like, oh my gosh, an interview, I'm so scared. This is, what's this gonna be like? And I thought in my mind, and this is part of the, the work I'm doing is learning to just to say yes and be willing and be open to things you might be a little 
that feel unknown and it feels really good. I'm so glad I did. <laughs> well, I am too. I mean, you are honest and it is refreshing and it, it's, 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 you're natural. I mean, you had nothing to worry about at all. This was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed this. Even though we haven't seen each other in years, I, I feel like we saw each other yesterday. You're just that type of person, so. Well, I do follow you on Instagram. Yes, and I follow you back. <laughs> so I feel like it's it's a it's kind of a um, it's a fun it's a fun little tool that allows us to sort of like step in and out of each other's lives and go, hey, what are you doing? Hey, hi, you know, just like little heads up, like I'm so proud of you and what you're doing. This is great. Or so I feel like you and I have like over the last year, I feel like we've sort of been in contact um, via that way, via Instagram. Social media is, it, it, it can be a good tool. It can be valuable. It is perspective. Yes. 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 It, it really is. And um, there's a lot of, there's choices that we make, aren't there? Absolutely. We want to use these things and, and who we want to connect with. And so it's sort of like this, this little, this, I, I don't know, I, I can't think of the word right now. But yes, yes, it's it's been helpful in that way, and I've I've been reunited with certain friends and um, been able to make some new ones that I've really been grateful for as well. So um, life is precious. It's good to have good people around us that inspire us as well. And you inspire me. So thank you. Oh. 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 Oh.